There's no better revenge story than that of Tachesis against Putin. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about Verminard of Nidus. I'd like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance Gaming materials using my affiliate links. I am referencing the original DL modules Dragons of Flame, Dragons of Hope, Dragons of Desolation, Dragons of Faith, and the War of the Lance sourcebook for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. This was one of my personal favorite villains even before we learned about his backstory. His presence in every image speaks to confidence and power, exactly what you want to see facing off against a group of heroes. But once you know more about Verminard as an individual, you may like this villain even more. We all know through the legend of Huma Dragonbane from the Third Dragon War, around 1060 Prey Cataclius, how Huma and the Silver Dragon Heart and the Dragonlance faced off against Tachesis and banished her from the mortal realm to the Abyss. What most on Kryn don't know is that Tachesis took this act very personally. I mean, how could she not? Defeated by a mortal and a second attempt dragon? I mention this as Tachesis corrupted the first dragons created, the Chromatics, and Paladine then had Reorks make new dragons known as the Metallics. Tachesis was not one to rest on her laurels, however, so when the last heir of Huma, Lord Laka Dragonbane of East Borders, had a son named Aglaka, I believe Tachesis began to engineer her revenge. Laka Dragonbane was a knight of Salamnia, and as proud and honorable as the knights are, they're still mortal men. Laka would end up having an affair with his friend, Lord Dagrafin's wife, a fellow Salamnic knight, as one might expect, Dagrafin was not happy about this, and as he traveled through the Calchist Mountains, his small family sought shelter in a cave during a storm where the Drudus Lindasha Iman lived and helped deliver the baby Verminard. The corruption had begun, as this child was a stain on Dagrafin's life. He named him after Vermin in disgust. This second living heir to Huma was not on Tachesis' radar, and though Paladine prophesied that the two brothers would achieve great things and be able to banish the dark forces forever, Tachesis had different plans. Not only would she orchestrate through her minion, the red dragon Ember, in the guise of a young mage named Ceresties, the transfer of Dagrafin's firstborn son to be fostered by Laka, and Laka's son, Aglaka, would be fostered in turn by Dagrafin, so that the two heirs of Huma were now in the exact same house, to be tempered by the hatred of their surrogate father and the evil machinations of Tachesis and Ember. Verminard would learn of this prophecy of Paladines through whisperings by Ember, but by the time he was of age to accept it, he had a lifetime of misery and seeds of hate growing within him. He was granted Nightbringer by the Dark Queen to seal his corruption, and he would murder his brother and his true father before leaving to find glory in the only person's service who accepted him, Tachesis, the Queen of Darkness. Can you imagine her elation at not only corrupting the Huma line, but destroying it entirely, and having the only surviving member of the Dragonbane family as her own devoted cleric? This was not the end of Verminard's story, however. He was trained by Ceresties in arcane magic before devoting himself to Tachesis and becoming her cleric. So once again, like Eric is before him, Verminard's backstory is one mixed up between arcane and divine magic use. But it is all granted through Tachesis, so what are you going to do? Verminard would join the burgeoning dragon armies under the command of Ericas, and with the failure of Fair Charon in the Sylvanesty conflict, Verminard was elevated to Dragon Highlord over the Red Wing. The Red Dragon Army would decimate everything in its path, as they claimed Pax Tharkas and actively searched for the Blue Crystal Staff. Verminard wanted to ensure the Gods of Good did not return to threaten the Dark Queen, so he placed a black dragon named Cassanth in Zax Saroth to protect the Dis of Mishakal and assigned his Fumaster Tota to search for the staff. Verminard would not be successful, however. 
With the nudging of Paladine in the form of Fizban, the Inn Fellows would retrieve the discs and bring back word of the old gods to the cleric Elistan. And then, through a series of blunders, Verminard was defeated by these Inn Fellows with the aid of the senile red dragon Flamestrike. In his final moments, believing he could face off against the Inn Fellows alone, sheer numbers would prove his faith insufficient. But that was not the true end of Verminard. And this is where the novels deviate from the modules. Because if there's one thing every horror and Dragonlance fan should remember, it is that if you do not see the corpse dismembered, they may not be dead, and could in fact come back later at a climactic moment. This happens a few times with Verminard. <laughs> when the prisoners of Pax Tharkaz are fleeing with the aid of the Infellows, they're attacked by Verminard and Ember from the sky. And when they finally enter Thorbarden and claim the Hammer of Keras, they discover that both Ember and Verminard are there through the assistance of their puppet, Realgar of the Thewar. This final confrontation with Verminard is a dangerous and impactful one, but one where the heroes are victorious. And thus, Verminard of Nidus, the last living heir of Huma Dragonbane and the Cleric of Tachesis, met his end. Or did he? <laughs> That's right, there is one more twist in the story. When the Infellows are hunting for Evan Shatterstone in Flotsam, they encounter an information broker named Seville Dranim Rev, who assists them with information and stokes confusion and fear at his whim. This mercenary has a nasty gray scar across his windpipe and is loyal to none other than himself. In truth, this is the fallen cleric Verminard, as his name spelled backwards is Verminard Lives. Now, while Seville is assisting the heroes, he is as ignorant to their true identity as they are to his, and depending on the chaos of the game, he may work with them or against them. In either case, his relationship with Tota seems to be ongoing in some capacity as well. With his new identity, he has truly made a name for himself, and while his ultimate fate is unknown, he is motivated to once more become a cleric of his Dark Queen. The story of Verminard is one of both unholy revenge metered out by an infinitely patient evil god, and one of pure sorrow. He is the perfect example of how to corrupt and doom a child by poor parenting. If his surrogate father had chosen to love him, Verminard's story might be wildly different. Our human history is filled with acts of our vile natures, but I cannot imagine a worse act than to hate an infant or to actively destroy it by their parents. And yet it happens every day in our world by humans who are either emotionally incapable of being parents or are simply vile in their actions toward their children. This can be seen as the ultimate cautionary tale, I think. The human animal is born as tabula rasa, a clean slate. We fill that slate with our interactions and presentations to the child through our culture, society, and religions. Our goal should not be to shape a child into something we want them to be, but rather allow them to shape their own individual identities through our support and unconditional love, regardless who the actual parents are. And that is all I have to say about Verminard of Nidus. What do you think of the character's seemingly impossible survival? Do you like the revenge story Tachesis exacted on Huma? And finally, would you have known about Seville if you were playing a character in the game? Leave a comment below. I'd like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember... You might as well say it's refreshing to see a man with his eyes gouged out.